This lecture will explain the formula for calculating the sample correlation coefficient r. This is the procedure to compute the sample correlation coefficient r. The requirements are as follows. Obtain a random sample of n data pairs xy. The data pairs should have a bivariate normal distribution. This means that for a fixed value of x, the y value should have a normal distribution, or at least a mound-shaped and symmetric distribution. And for a fixed y, the x values should have their own approximately normal distribution. The procedure requires first using the data pairs, compute the sum of x, the sum of y, the sum of x squared, the sum of y squared, and the sum of the product of x and y. Step two, with n equals the sample size, sum of x, sum of y, sum of x squared, sum of y squared, and sum of xy, you are ready to compute the sample correlation coefficient r using the compilation formula shown. So it's just a matter of plugging in the values and solving. Be careful, the notation sum of x squared means first square x and then calculate the sum, whereas the sum of x in parentheses squared implies or means first sum the x values and then square the result. Our first example is given here. Sand driven by wind creates large, beautiful dunes at the Great Sand Dunes National Monument, Colorado. Is there a linear correlation between wind velocity and sand drift rate? Let x be a random variable representing wind velocity in 10 centimeters per second, and let y be a random variable representing drift rate of sand in 100 grams per centimeters per second. A test site at the Great Sand Dunes National Monument gave the following information about x and y. Part A asks us to construct a scatter diagram. Based on the visual, do you expect the calculated r value to be positive or negative? The solution is provided here. From the scatter diagram, it appears that as x values increase, y values also tend to increase. Therefore, r should be positive. In part b, we'll compute r using the computation formula. The first part of the solution is provided here. To find r, we need the values for x and y, which are simply entered in from the data table, the Greek letter epsilon is the mathematical notation for sum. As such, the sum of x, or total, for all the x values is 678, and the sum of y, or the total of all the y values, is computed similarly at 166. The third column is x squared. Here, we simply take the individual x value and square it. For example, 70 squared, or 70 times 70, is 4,900. Then, at the bottom of the column, we sum up all the x squared values to get 67,892. The fourth column is y squared. This is conceptually similar to the previous column, but only considers the y values. For example, 3 squared, or 3 times 3 is 9. Again, at the bottom, we sum up all the y square values to get 6,768. The last column is the xy column, which requires us to take the product or multiply x and y. For example, 70 times 3 is 210. And just like the previous columns, at the bottom, we sum up all the xy values to get 18,458. The second part of the solution is provided here, where we enter the values into the computational formula for r. 
Using the values from the previous page, we stub in all the values and we plug in the values and we solve for R. Here we get 0 0.949. Part C asks us to interpret. What does the value of R tell you? The solution is provided here. The R value is 0 0.949, which is very close to 1. So we have an indication of a strong positive linear correlation between wind velocity and drift rate of sand. In other words, we expect that higher wind speeds tend to mean greater drift rate.